Welcome back everyone, I'm the Architecture Insider and today we have a video on how to create a floor plan render using only Enscape and SketchUp. I want to thank Enscape for partnering with me on this video. So first what I'm going to do guys is show you a few tips on how to actually make a SketchUp model just to make your life a little, a little bit easier. So first of all what we have is, so you've got your CAD floor plan and it's really annoying sometimes to create shapes. So what you can do is you can download a plugin which is called Enoroth. If you just search for a face creator you can find it and you just install it free as uh, every other SketchUp extension. What that does is literally you, you click on the button of the extension and it literally creates faces. It still doesn't do it 100% perfectly but it does save you a lot of time which is great for uh, doing SketchUp modeling because we all know how long that can take. Now I've already done this building in Revit so when I exported it uh, it came with all these uh, funny colors, but that's just, you know, how, how Revit uh, has assigned different colors to different materials and elements and stuff. So the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a top floor plan render. So what I need to do is create a section from the top to be roughly the same height, just to make sure that it cuts through all of the walls, any windows. I do have a few high windows, which unfortunately it won't cut through, but you know, that is all okay. So after creating my scene, uh, the sketch model is a bit messy when it comes from Revit. So it's just about cleaning it up a little bit, any columns or beams that are sticking out, you make them smaller, anything like that. And so one of the tips that you could do is for any extra lines that are showing, if you click E for erase and then hold shift, it hides all of the lines so that you don't delete anything accidentally and messes up the whole model it just hides the lines which is ideal for like for example you can see how the roof has all these funny shapes because it's a hyperbolic purblite roof which is a bit annoying to create on revit and it creates these funny shapes so when you get into sketchup you can literally just hold shift and it gets rid of all of the lines so one tip that I will give you guys to is importing materials of your own. So you can literally go on Google or anywhere you want and you can even create your own uh, pictures of textures of, if you want. And what you do is you go to file import. So what you do is you select the files and you go down to JPEG. And then on the left make sure that you click texture and not image or new match photo, just texture. And you can literally just double click on any image you have. You click import and then this comes up so you click it and you drag it you can change the scale after so don't worry about it literally all you do is you right click on the actual texture you go to textures and you go to reset position which is reset so you can go to texture and then go to position so it gives you these four different points the different angles rotation position uh, scale so you can literally rotate i want it to be all straight so you can rotate it make it bigger however you want by dragging the green point and that literally does the job for you so another thing you get these colors from Revit which are like the windows so literally instead of uh, clicking on each one and make them um, using the bucket tool to select every single su surface inside and outside what you can do you can get the color by using by clicking I when you're on the book in the bucket tool the color is a specific color so you don't have to worry about it messing up any other colors so when you click on the color you go to edit and you can make it white and then change the opacity and, and then make it like a bit of a grayish which then makes the actual window so you don't have to worry about creating every single one because they're components from Revit. Now you can do the same thing with the frames and, and literally any other color that's there. So uh, it does make your life a, a lot easier but rather than having to select every single surface of the actual material and it keeps them as components. Before we get to the Enscape part, I just want to show you a little bit more about Enscape just so that you can see what it actually can do. So you can see here Enscape, it can do a lot of good things. You can see how you can literally create viewports and render them and create the video footage too. And it's really realistic. So you can see how it creates everything in proxies and then you can see how it would look like in real life. Some of the things that they do, that people can do on Enscape is absolutely crazy. Obviously, the more experience you have, the better it will, the model will look. And trust me, if you spend time doing it, it can look absolutely amazing. And you can see even Foster and, and Partners, even they use Enscape, which is amazing. Now let's go to the plans. So you can get a 14 day trial, a floating license or a fixed seat license. One thing I will tell you is Enscape is free for students for one year only. 
if your license does expire for that year you can apply again if you're you know in your first year or whenever you're graduating or whatever so Enscape is cheap it's affordable and it's really really good so I definitely recommend that you guys do use Enscape so after going on the top view again we will now open Enscape now Enscape has all of these little features on the top one of them is uh, like you know start Enscape to refresh the views to do the camera uh, to do VR settings, to open the materials, the textures, settings. We will go in detail for all of those later on. Now remember guys, this is not a beginner's tutorial. If you do want a beginner's tutorial on Enscape, please let me know. This is more of a, uh, not advanced, but this is already if you're familiar with the settings. I will go over a few of the settings, but I won't go over in very detail. So this is not a beginner's video. If you do want a beginner's video, let me know down below. Start Enscape. You, you just have to wait a little bit depending on your computer on how fast or how good it is. It will just take some time, so don't worry about it. Once it opens, opens up, you get a live rendered SketchUp model, which is literally amazing. Now, on the newest update of Enscape, you get a few options on the right. Perspective, and the other one is just a fly or a walk tool. So when you click on that perspective, you can get perspective, 2D perspectives, or you can even get axonometric, like uh, isometric, which is what we are going to use. So isometric can literally, it's like a 2D, um, 2D view, so it can be used for elevation, sections, floor plans, everything. So it's amazing. So if you want to see how to do a section render too, let me know down below. So you can see how it renders all of the glass and all of the materials and the grass, everything in detail, which is really good. Now just wait after we add all of the textures and all of the proper uh, models, it will look amazing. I'm sure you can see and I'm sure you have noticed before that the landscaping isn't fully modeled perfectly but since we're doing a top view only I'm not going to waste my time to model the sides of it properly so don't worry about it. The first thing that we're going to mess about is the visual settings. So now the visual settings is things like the styles of the of the lines. So you've got the outlines, you've got the camera, the exposure. So you can see you can change the orthographic to perspective there too. So you've got the field of view, you've got the autofocus, and you've got the rendering quality. Always make sure that the rendering quality is on ultra. If you have difficulties while using Enscape, just to look around, you should make the rendering quality to draft just until your, uh, you have your view set up and then you can change it to ultra and render. And then we, if you go to image on the top, you can see you've got all of your contrast, your saturation, your color temperature. Okay, you should mess about in here as much as you can before taking, taking it into Photoshop just to make your life a little bit easier. So you can see me just messing about just to see how it affects the model and, and things. So for me, I always just try to move it left and right just to see how it looks and then try to find the right thing for me. And then you've got your atmosphere, which is more for like 3D rather than just a 2D, to be honest. So you can have a look in those in your own time. When we go to capture, you should always make your resolution ultra, just to make just to make sure like ultra HD, HD, just to make sure you have the optimum quality. What it does do though, it creates a specific window, so you can't have like a thin rectangular portrait kind of view. To do that, you can just go to window and then just change your window size of the actual Enscape render. And now the other things you can do is go to the materials. Now this is the Enscape asset library. Literally there are things from here to forks, to spoons, to basketballs as you can see, to cars, to trees, a lot of things that you want. Now the other good thing is that it brings it in as a proxy which means that you don't have to worry about quality or the model taking ages to open or to use. It just comes like a big grey blob which is perfect. So you can see all of the all of details that it has and everything and you will see all of this detail later on when I finish the actual render. What I'm going to start now is to look for a office chair to put, for, to put in the reception desk. So you literally you click on it and you bring it into your model. And you literally rotate it whatever you want to do with it so i'm gonna need three here so i will just select it hold alt and just add three models it doesn't make it slow it's not in it's not in a lot of detail but it will look very good afterwards create groups from all of your roofs so that you can turn them off or turn them on back on whenever you want so that you don't create shadows with the roof it's without the roof which will look a lot more lighter and more interesting 
so you can see now after i modeled all of the things in here everything is in detail you've got the chairs tables i even added like coffee machines and plates and stuff like that so it's and a lot, like that is with Enscape. the more time you spend on it the better it's gonna look and that's with everything the more time you spend on photoshop modeling the better it's gonna look you can see now in how much detail the, the model is you can see literally the materials of the chairs of the sofas everything is in a lot of detail So you go to your extension, click Enscape, and you go further down in the middle and you click Render Image. Now this might take a while, again depending on your laptops or computers uh, features. So you save it, it does do it pretty quick to be honest I think. Again depending on the settings that you put it might take longer too. So now we're going into the post production which is a little bit of Photoshop, nothing too much. I'm sure everyone is capable of doing these kind of things on Photoshop. So one of the first things I'm going to do is just make the image a little bit more brighter and add a few more contrast. So again, don't be scared to make it a very bright. A friend of mine used to tell me, oh, why are you being so stingy on the brightness? Make it really bright because it does make it look a lot better. Now you can change with these as much as you want with the color filters, whatever you want. I like to make sure that the model is a bit uh, colder rather than warm because it just adds, it just makes it a bit unrealistic when it's a bit warm. So you can change the opacity and change the density as well of the blueness. It looks more appropriate. So I just wanted to crop the model a little bit just, just to not show unnecessary things because the main focus, so the main focus at the end of the day is the actual floor plan. So one thing I realized is that Enscape didn't model uh, the f some of the walls properly. So I just thought, you know what, I'll just, rather than wasting my time going on Enscape and trying to do it again, I'll just quickly do it on Photoshop. So I just selected all of the outline of the walls and made them all black. I did think of keeping them white, but to be honest, I just thought that if they're black, it just makes the floor plan pop out a little bit more. So again, by, make it, by making it white, after your selection, you just, you just create a clipping mask and just make it all black, you know, so you can always erase or add more things to it. So after doing all of this, I just thought to add a, little, a few more textures to the actual model. So you can see me adding a few more textures to the water just to make it a little bit more realistic and a bit lighter. And so to the, to the grass and to all of the pavements as well. Now one thing that I added was, uh, instead of adding, adding all of the room names, which I think was going to ruin the actual uh, floor plan, is to add uh, numbers with a thin outline, which I thought would look much better. Now you can have a little key to other on the side that has all of the numbers and all of the room names. So what I, what I also added is I selected the selection for the, for example, the grass. And it added like a really low opacity black outline, as you can see, on the water, on the grass, just to give it a little bit more depth and make it look more 3D-ish. After doing that, you click Alt, Control, Shift, and E to merge all of the layers as one image and put it right to the top. And when you go to filter, you go to camera raw filter, which then lets you to mess about a little bit more to add the final touches of the model. So you can see that the main things I always mess around is the temperature, uh, the tint, and you can literally play around with it. It's literally trial and error, move it left, move it right, see what you think, whatever works best for you. So that is all done now. So you can see the before and the after image. You can see how it's more brighter, a bit, little bit colder, and a bit more realistic in my opinion. Thank you all very much for watching, thank you for subscribing. Let me know if you guys are interested in Enscape and if you guys would recommend it to anyone else. Would you use Enscape for your own projects or would you not? What would you think? Please let me know your thoughts down below. Once again, thank you all very much for watching and subscribing. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.